my name is Beth McDonald Stone and I'm an avid knitter and knitwear designer living in Bermuda. Um, it's Christmas time, it's December. Um, for those that celebrate, it's such a great time of year. Um, Christmas in Bermuda is amazing. There's definitely a scent, a feeling on the island that is a bit more subtle uh, than what you would have maybe in North America when you actually get really cold and snow and stuff. We don't get that, but you can feel it. Um, it's amazing and I'm definitely in the Christmas spirit. So because of that, I thought we would sit in the living room today instead of my kitchen and chat and um, by my tree. I've got all the windows open. It's actually kind of a humid day today. It's been quite cool, which has really got me in the, in the mood about, uh, the chill started about two weeks ago. It was fantastic. Um, oh, sorry, mohair already. Um, got me in the mood, um, started the decorating, started the seasonal stuff. Um, today is a bit of a blip. Um, we have rain through the night and then we have it again this afternoon apparently. And so the sun's out, um, but it's like 100% humidity because it's, you know, melting all the, the water droplets off the trees and roads and stuff. So it's kind of sticky. It's not really sweater weather, but this is what I do for you guys. So there you go. Anyways, no, I'm joking. I, I look forward to, um, to the podcast and I really look forward to, um, talking, but talking with you all this time. Um, it's been a while. I know it's been a month. I've been trying to do them monthly. Um, I'm thinking I might change that for January because, um, I'm finding I'm trying to pack a lot into each month. Uh, I didn't realize I did so much knitting. Now um, I am doing officially a lot of knitting this um, fall and, and hopefully will continue. Um, I've retired from, retired, I've closed down our business, which was an interior design business in Bermuda. We've been active for 25 years or so. It was fantastic. It was great. Um, wasn't slowing down but I was slowing down. And so last November decided that it was time to um, maybe just wrap it up. So it took about a year to do that. And now I'm, you know, trying to do knitwear full time and enjoy it. And um, yeah, and it's, it's amazing. And my creative juices are back. Um, with interior design, I, you know, did this for so long. It's um, a fantastic industry. It really suffered during COVID. Um, yeah, um, my drive really suffered during COVID and, and I really tapped out and I just wasn't feeling creative anymore. And um, for people who are creative, there's like a compulsion. There's a compulsion to in, not invent, but produce and design and whether it's drawing, whether it's knitting or whatever. I mean, I've gone through a ton of different mediums in my life and interior design was a massive one for 20 some odd years until it wasn't until you know it's just like oh another kitchen or oh um another living room and i just didn't have the and no matter what fabulous fabrics were released that year and what amazing tiles or whatever i just didn't feel it and um it didn't wake me up in the middle of the night with passion it woke me up in the night with stress you know the usual anyways so sort of sad still to say goodbye. I can't believe I'm publicly announcing that because I really haven't, other than to my clients and whatnot, um, and anyone who wants to do work, I politely decline. But yeah, it's just, an, I think, in a natural evolution. I, there's a lot of my friends in Bermuda that think I'm going to go back into it, and I might. I'm not, never say never, which is why I've not sort of closed any dramatic doors with vendors and suppliers. Um, but for the time being, I'm really enjoying this knitwear design and really enjoying where that's taking me and how excited I am about it and how much I can't stop doing it. So again, like right it was like it was when I was starting my interior design firm. Um, I do it seven days a week now. I'm making notes. I'm I've got ideas. I'm doing drawings. I'm I'm just it, it's it's all a part of me and that's really how I work. And when <clears throat> And when I have to schedule work in to get it done, then I know the creative part is gone. So, yeah, so that's all to say, I've been really busy. I've got some neat things coming down the pipe, pike. I, I feel like it's two different sides of the pond, say it differently. Anyways, um, I've got 
creative ideas. I've got lots of designs still coming out, um, coming out fast and furiously and, you know, working on new ones and just, it's great. It's wonderful. I'm so thrilled and, and, um, and I hope you are too. And I hope you sort of enjoy my sort of knitting journey that I'm on right now and long may it last. I mean, I've been avidly knitting for, since my son was sort of born, he's 16. I did knit before, but this is my current. So I don't see it going anywhere and let's just roll with it. So what am I wearing today? Today I'm wearing um, the Festive Sparkle Sweater and um, it's just a great, sorry, I'm wearing a, a dress underneath that sort of the neutral that'll go with everything. So it, you'll see this dress with a lot of different sweaters today. But anyways, the Festive Sparkle Sweater it's a really fun, really quick, really big gauge project that's sort of, I'm putting out, it'll be in Ravelry when, you, um, when I post this episode, uh, which I'm planning on doing on Wednesday, uh, the 6th, my birthday. I'll be 48. Anyways, I'm posting on Wednesday, the 6th, and that's when I'll post this sweater. Um, I feel, I call it the festive sparkle sweater because there's sparkle. And basically the idea behind this is just we all have sort of one or two, like two or three skeins of yarn that on their own probably wouldn't make a sweater but you know holding them together and you can mix and marl and whatever um so it's a stash buster so i used five uh skeins to do this one including two with sparkles so i have to i had to write write it down because I, I just can't remember these things so anyways so one was Bare Naked Wool's Kent DK in a color white sand. So I think that was sort of the beige. One was King Cole Cosmos um, color Starbo. So I think that's the multicolored um, paillettes you can see in there, sparkle, which really didn't add any bulk. It's just, that's just for effect. And then the other one that didn't add any bulk and just for effect was Kremke Sol Stellaris, which is um, a lovely sort of Stellina threading through there. And then uh, Lemonade Shop Mighty Sock Color Toxic Hippo, which I bought at VK, uh, not VK, um, Rhinebeck a couple years ago. And I really needed three, but she only had two. So this is where this all started. I could only buy two of these skeins and I knit socks, but I don't really wear socks. Anyways, I like knitting socks. I'll wear them when I travel. That's pretty much it. So anyways, so two skeins of this lovely toxic hippo wasn't gonna give me a sweater, but I thought I could do something with it. So that's when I designed this because I really wanted to use it. And then I also used Valley Yarn Southampton color silver spring. Oh, and that's a mohair. So there's a mohair, there's a DK, and there's a fingering. And then there's two that really don't add any bulk and those are the two oh, one with payettes and one with sort of just Delena. so that's the five and basically the gauge is 13 stitches by 16 rows most of my patterns really don't you don't need to know anything about the row gauge that doesn't matter at all it's all about the stitch gauge so basically if you can put a bunch of yarns together to get 13 stitches for four inches i used a us 11 eight millimeter needle um this is a really fun, really quick, and kind of like what I plan on wearing all holiday season. So um, you can wear it, dress it up, dress it down. I see myself wearing it with um, you know, a dress festively, or if I'm just hanging around the house when it's cold, and I'm hoping the temperatures drop again. Um, I love a long denim shirt a turtleneck and black leggings. And this is the perfect sweater for that. So that's like my everyday outfit around the home. Um, yeah, uh, what else can I say about this? So it's top down in the round, really easy. There's different needles obviously to get the, you know, the collar and then you go a little even smaller for the cuff. So it's an exaggerated cuff, which gives you kind of a fun puff sleeve detail. And um, yeah, so the idea is to have it, have the pattern now so that you could throw in some sparkle, use up some stash and have something fabulous maybe for Christmas day or New Year's Eve. So that's gonna be on Ravelry now because it's my birthday month and because I think this is a really festive um, top, I've got it on for the month of December at 50% off. So my gift to you. Um, if you like it, enjoy. It's a really fun knit. I, I really, really, I really love it. Um, 
so I'm gonna take this off now and I'm gonna throw on something else because we're gonna stick with sort of knitting in December and that kind of theory, um, topic. So hang on one second, right back, two secs. So back on December knitting and um, I love Advents. I don't know if you do, I hope you do. If you don't, whatever, who cares? I love Advents, I like minis, I, you know, I'm, I'm not great with, uh, sorry, this fluff. It, I've got, um, I perspired a bit and so it's sticking to my face. Um, anyways, um, I have scraps. I need to be more creative with my scraps. I like Advents. I like uh, minis. I don't usually buy a whole ton of minis because I do treat myself to the Advents and then that sort of does me for, well, I've got a good stash. But I try to use them, I try to be creative. And I love projects that take the month of December that you sort of eke out through the month and, and savor and all that. So I've got a few that I'm working on this year, but I wanna show you about this design here. This came out in, I think, 2021. This is called, yeah. the, oh, sorry. Someone might be coming up the driveway. Nope, just driving by and, oh no, someone's here. Hold just on. my husband coming home from the grocery store. Anyways, um, all good. So this um, design, Color Play Pullover, designed in 2021, I believe. And again, contiguous all the round. This one's really interesting. And this, this was one in my first batch of the contiguous design sort of processes. And I did a number of sweaters that all are shaped like this. And I've sort of circled back this year. So it'll make sense. Hold up, hold on. So this is a lovely collar, which then you grow with a saddle shoulder sleeves and then bust here. So basically it's all done in increases. There's no seaming, there's no, um, yeah, there's no seaming, there's no tricky bits at all. It's literally just which direction and where you place your increases. So um, it's a really fun sweater and I uh, very simple to do. Um, I did this one with longer, like three quarter length sleeves, um, which I love. And I just, you know, it's warm today, so I'll put it up there. Um, I did this one with a fade, so I was using up stash. So initially I was like, oh, stash buster. And I started designing it, I think in the fall, I can't remember. Um, so stash busting, so you use whatever yarn held with a mohair, um, just to get a DK weight or a Surrey, whatever you prefer, or just hold a double. Uh, it's a 20 stitch gauge for per four inches. Um, and then I thought, oh my God, this is such a, because it's contiguous and it's in the round, it should be perfect for, um, again, Advent minis because it's ex almost exactly what you need and um, you can have fun with it. So um, I um, played around with it for Advents and um, love it. It's really fun. So this is called the Color Plate Pullover. Um, I know Mary Lisa was like one of the first, I think she tested it for me and then she's the face of it. So thank you, Mary Lisa. Um, you're a wonderful uh, ambassador of this sweater. I know you look so great in it. Um, so yeah, I mean, you do have to do it maybe a little, if I remember correctly, um, I give guides on how many rows for the sleeves and the body. You can weigh it out, you know, um, if you want, but I think all the, oh, it's been so long since I've knit one. Um, but it's very simple because I like to just, I like to knit rather mindlessly. I'm, I do complicated knits. I think they're fun and fine, but, uh, I really, really, really love a mindless knit. So that's what this is. This really, truly is a mindless knit. And, um, yeah. And, and, um, I think I even did on this one, a different weight for the hem, which is interesting. But again, I was just using, I think I was using scraps here to mimic, um, a, uh, oh, Luna wants to come up. Do you want to come up? Uh, to mimic, do you want to come up? Oh, there she is. Hello, Luna. Can you say hi? Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Luna, you gonna lie down here. I'll move this pillow. You don't need this pillow there. And then it gives you more room. Okay. Lie down. Okay. Or just be part of it. Would you like to wear this? This would be your colors. Are these, oh, these would look so good on you, Luna. Okay, silly. Um, yeah, so that's this. This sweater is on Ravelry. And again, I also have this one up for 50% off for December um, because it's that time of year to, to knit, to use your Advents or scraps or just have fun. So um, fingering weight held with mohair, surrey to make a DK weight, which is a 20 stitch for four inches. 
and I, um, did I say which, on a US for 3.5 needles. But again, gauge, you find what, how you get there. Um, I know historically I've always thought I was a loose knitter, but it turns out I'm getting kind of tight. So I don't know. Um, stick with the 20, 20 stitches. And I, I've got 28 rows for four inches, but you do you. Um, and most of my patterns are in measurement suggestions or, or if they do rows, they also tell you about the measurements because this is important. So, you know, you cast on and then your increases here are to create a shoulder and then your increase and you do rapid increases here to create a puff sleeve um, and then increases on the inside to make a sleeve straight section to make up the difference and then um, increases on this side of the arm side to um, you know get to your bust size so it's really 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 that might sound confusing but it's really not it's surprisingly simple and it's kind of basically like a raglan you've got your four points of increases and you just treat them differently um, so instead of having four, one, two, three, four, and you increase on either side, you've got one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and you increase every row on, on certain sides directionally, all explained very clearly in the pattern. Really easy. Um, this one, again, I've got, it doesn't go so great with my skirt, but, um, you know, again, simple hem fun puff sleeves. Um, it's a high collar. I do like, so I find um, I like to put more attention into collars and how they hit so that it's a more of a finished look. I like collars. Um, I do like a higher collar, but I'd probably wear maybe a scarf underneath it for a transition, but I'm trying to create a finished neckline without a lot of um, fussing with styling if that makes sense. So that's why this is a high collar, just to really give that nice, clean look. So on that same note with um, Advent knitting, um, what am I doing this year? So this year I've treated myself to three Advents. Feeling a bit um, cheeky about that, but you know, when you do it over the summer and you can't really remember what you've ordered and and then you get sort of swept up in the excitement and I definitely did that. So um, I love Willens and Nosh. So um, I, I love the Willens and Nosh. Um, I've done this for the last few years. This year, um, the yarn is fabulous as always. Right now it seems to be, I'm on, so today is Monday the 4th. So I've only done four. Uh. I shouldn't need to count but yeah so I am I did my last right this morning and um, it seems to be sort of going from navy to a green gradient um, she also gave a link to a free sock pattern which gives us this um, these really cool chevron stripes which are fabulous I really love it I love the beige neutral so it's kind of um, a bit more rustic so um, Jeff's just coming down to his desk and I can't persuade him to come on to say hello to everyone but anyways he just walked by to his desk so yeah so loving this this is really fun in it came um this amazing oh uh, I think it's a wool soap from Tuft and it smells divine so I love how everything is smelling and the scent of this is I'm not really sure I don't know, but it smells amazing. And so what I have done is I've separated the socks so that one stays in this bag, which is part of what you what I've ordered. And I did put the other sock because I find they kind of banged against each other and the, the skeins would kind of unwind each other. So I put the other sock in this amazing bag from uh, Dolphina and you can read with the cheeky words. Um, nothing too shocking, but really fun. So I've got, you know, one sock in each um, and I work on that first thing in the morning with my coffee and I love that, tra that tradition, that habit. Um, and later on in the day, 
We're an hour earlier than Eastern Standard Time. We're Atlantic Standard Time, so usually about an hour or so later. Um, another pattern that I'm working on um, comes through the daily. It's a, it's a mystery knit along, and it's by um, Telly Bean Knits, and the designer is um, Stephanie Lotvin. And I should have said that the sock pattern for that are the Peace and Joy socks, which is what we were given um, with the yarn. So Peace and Joy socks for the Woolens and Nosh um, Advent schemes. Um, the other one that I'm working on right now is called the Grand Opening Shawl. It's a mystery knit along designed by Stephanie Lotvin, who is Telly Bean Knits. And for that, I'm using the Chelsea Yarns, um, their mini and I, uh, Advent Kit, and I couldn't say no. I love New York City. Love it, love it, love it. I spend a lot of time there. Um, it's really close to Bermuda. It's uh, an hour and a half flight, two hour flight. Just we're like 750 miles from New York City in, in the middle of the Atlantic. So um, it's great and it's completely like night and day to Bermuda. So where Bermuda is really leafy and gardeny, New York isn't. <laughs> it's urban and it's, it's a quick dose of urban really close. So when uh, Christina put this out that she was going to do this um, New York um, Advent theme. I couldn't resist at all. And so um, thoroughly enjoying that. So again, today is day four. So it comes all in little um, lovely little bags like this. Um, and I haven't opened them all. I haven't opened today, so today is, ooh, lovely strip of pistachio color, fabulous. So, so far hers have been amazing and it seems to maybe be doing a bit of a gentle fade. I'm gonna, you can hold that for a second. Oh, no, you don't wanna hold it? Okay, I'm with you, no worries. Um, I dropped what I was working on. So with this, sorry. Um, with this uh, mystery shawl, this is what I've gotten so far. So there's three days on there now. One, two, three. You can see them in different textures, but you can see just the subtleties in the yarn colors. And aren't they so pretty? So this will be four right there. So is it a fade? I don't know. We'll have to see. But I'm super psyched about this. So I've got to get this wound up. I've just printed the one page of the pattern. I do print my pages. Not all, the great thing with Telly Bean that's um, Mystery Knit Alongs, there's always one section that you just need and it's a chart. So I don't need to print off oodles of stuff every day. I just have to get that one section. I know I should use my um, iPad and stuff, but I'm looking at my iPad, so I can't really use the iPad and look at it. And the font's just too darn small. I, I can't cope. So that is really, really, really fun. So that's, oh, maybe I'm actually four. Uh, that's, okay, cheeky. So working on this, 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 um, a little bit every day. And again, the other thing I like about, um, Stephanie's, um, Advents or not Advents, Mystery Knit Alongs. So I did the, um, cowl over Halloween, the month of Halloween. I like how I, I set goals and I have sort of a schedule for my design work and what I want to keep up with. And what I like about so far, um, when I worked on Stephanie Lotvin's um, Mystery Knit Alongs is they're very bite-sized-ish. And so I'm not totally blowing apart my design, my work, work, my, yeah, work, my work knitting schedule to do, an ad, to do a Mystery Knit Along. Like it's totally manageable to just do it both. Similarly to the um, socks, um, you know, I'm not, running the interior design business anymore. And as you know, my son is on a bike, so I don't even have to drive him to school anymore. I just sort of, yeah. So I'm a bit more free and it's fun. And I get to have some cheeky time with um, knitting, knitting these mystery knits. And I do really think on that topic, while I'll always have a design on my needles, probably, there might be times when I don't, but it's really important for me to keep on knitting other people's designs because A, you need something sort of mindless just to knit along to and to um, follow without having to always make a lot of decisions. But B, also, it's really important to keep learning. And I know I keep learning when I'm knitting 
on my ideas and I'm always trying to problem solve and there's always sort of that kind of concept. But it's also really important to knit other people's patterns and I'm a really big believer in that. So that's what's so great. So I'll always have, I also believe that um, if I'm working on a project that's right, that's never, I've never designed before, it's not like a second version or a third version, then I only have one of those going. After that, everything else is um, secondary and I really, really think it's important to knit other people's stuff and learn. So that, so that's Advent number two that I'm really enjoying. And I can't, once I finish with, um, recording today, I am really looking forward to having a cup of coffee. It might be a cold one, um, and putting in today's stripe. The third Advent that I treated myself to and am absolutely loving is, um, is the Ocean Loop Studio Stitch Markers. Um, and so every day there's a little envelope. So I haven't done today's envelope. So today is number four, even though it's not on number six. So every day you have a lovely little envelope like that. And I ordered this sort of lanyard so that I can clip this onto whatever um, project bag or whatever, but it's so attractive, so pretty. So far we've had these three lovelies here. If I put it there, maybe you can see the colors better. Yeah. Um, and so in today's, um, let's see what pretty, oh, oh, lovely blue. Pearl, that's quite pearlescent. It's really, really, really beautiful. Um, so that's that. And I can just put that on here and enjoy using all of those really fabulous really fun that was great i think i heard about this from the grocery girl so thank you so much tracy and jody for this this is this is a really special one too we're all so special but it's fun to come at it from a different angle so that's that and then my fourth i was gonna say third but fourth is um a really beautiful one from it's just a half advent so 12 day advent, but I'm doing it every other day from the Woolly Mammoth. And I love this sort of stuff because I do a lot of knitting with, um, with um, non super wash yarns. So, uh, so these are seemingly all um, a mix of Jacob, BFL and wool and great colors. I've done a similar one from Norway a few years ago, and um, that's day two, so I guess um, tomorrow I can do day three. But these are great to have, and again, I know I've promised to show my office and how I store things, needles, etc. but I have a bowl of these um, more toothy yarns um, in different colors so that I can use them along with my other favorite tooth yarns for color work. They're just kind of sometimes exactly what you need. And it just sort of, rather than getting cones of a ton of colors, which I do like to buy cones, and I did take advantage of the Holst um, Black Friday sale. So hopefully that's winding its way from Denmark to Bermuda. Um, but sometimes it's really nice just to have a bunch of smaller bits for color work on hand and inspiring and i play with color a lot um so with my yarn and my cones and stuff uh, i have sh open shelves in my office and i'm always moving them around and playing with how they play together so having little bits it's just like having little paint pots isn't it adding a little paint to our collection to be creative so i think that's it on advent knitting and everything uh, and december knitting um, it's such a fun time of year and in Bermuda, it can be just like it is today. It goes up and down kind of chilly, um, humid, warm, chilly, humid, warm like this. So we, we do this for December and usually January and February and early March can be really quite chilly and cool. So it's kind of fun in my mind. Like I, I get to knit these warm, cozy things, wear them sometimes, but I know like January and February, I mean, I'll be living in them. I'll be, you know, our houses aren't, in, aren't insulated, they're stone. 
they get really cold and damp. And so in, in January and February, especially February, we have fires in the fireplace every night and we go to bed wearing our woolies. It's cold. Um, so yeah, so anyway, so it's sort of like, I guess it's sort of fall here, but what in North America you'd have. Uh, so it's that excitement to really dive into it. So anyways, December knitting, it's a blast. Now I'm gonna take a quick break, um, take this off for a second and try and um, maintain my temperatures. Um, have a drink of water, come back and talk about some other stuff. But in the meantime, I'm gonna show you, Luna and I go on lots of walks. She's a big walker, we walk miles every day. And um, I've shown you some of the beach pictures before, which I've got some more beach pictures at the end of the episode. But in the middle of the episode, I'm going to insert some videos and photos of walks on Harbor Road. So Harbor Road is that way, just due north, probably about four blocks. Roads in Bermuda aren't really blocks because it's a wiggly, strangely shaped island. But it's sort of, if you can imagine, four blocks that way is Harbor Road. And that goes around the Great Sound and into the Harbor of Hamilton. And then that way is south. Um, and so the beach walks that we do are sort of two blocks that way. Um, so at the midpoint, we're going to go north to Harbor Road. And at the end, we'll go south to the beaches. But anyways, enjoy. Be back in a minute. Lynn and I have had a drink of water, right Lynn? And a uh, change of top again, so feeling feeling uh, refreshed. Um, so before I get into this, I'm gonna talk about what I'm working on right now because this one's really comfortable and cool and I don't wanna rush through this one because <laughs> the next one is actually kinda hot. So anyways, so what am I working right now? I knit last spring a turtle dove, turtle dove 2 by melissa clulo um when i think she released it when she was at a spas chico so uh melissa clulo i believe it's free on ravelry it's a wonderful pattern everyone has heard a million things about our patterns and they are fantastic anyways i knit one in the spring using uh le gros mohair by biche bouche and that's an amazing sweater um Fit is fantastic, it's super flattering, and then by knitting with Bichet Bouche, it's uh, the Grim Mohair, um, it's really light and really thin. So definitely something that I can easily squish into a suitcase. Um, and really great for our weird sort of up and down pre-Christmas temperatures too, because it it can be chilly, and um, but uh, but you can't handle too much too much weight. So that's really great. So I love it so much, and the the cut's so great. I had a lot of maiden, I have to read this because I, um, 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 hand maiden fine yarn, uh, the maiden hair kind, um, yarn, um, color stardust. And this is an amazing yarn. I don't have any, I'm, I'm kind of a run out. So I've actually had to order more. I believe that uh, the Knitting Loft has their own version of this that they call, what was on the tip of my tongue? Care, their Care yarn. It's stunning, fantastic. Anyways, um, so I thought I would use, I had I had bought quite a bit. I thought I'd bought way too much. And so I held it double and I'm knitting this and I ran out. So I've got one more yarn, one more um, skein coming, and I'm hoping it's a close enough match. And I haven't totally, totally run out. So because I'm holding it double, my intention is for the back hem and the sleeves, I'll hold one of the old yarns left with one from the new, and hopefully it won't be too much. The other thing, because the drape of this is so great, 
and this is really, really warm. This is the opposite of the Grow Mohair, which is warm, but this is like hot. Um, I actually might not do much of a sleeve and just do um, an exaggerated cuff so that it basically sits up here. Cause I can, again, I can totally picture myself. I have these turtlenecks that I buy a ton of every color. I don't need to buy any more cause I've done it so long. The J Crew tissue turtleneck, it's the best. I sleep in them, I wear them all day. They're paper thin, thin tissue thin. Um, they're fantastic. They wash up like a dream and they just go under everything. So that's when it gets really cold, which it was last week. I wore it every, you know, every day, sleeping at night. And um, that under this would be great. So this is Turtle Dove by Melissa Clulo. Now this is a raglan shaping and her rate of increase is actually, it's a four row design. And um, so emphasis being put onto the body increases so you get a really nice boxy fit and less emphasis on the sleeve so half the increased numbers for the sleeves and um it's a really nice it's a really nice fit because you've still got like i always talk about having um flattering sleeves um and you can do more boxy body which gives a more balance and proportion it's definitely in this design too and i really like it I like the high-low hem, so the back, this is a four inch front hem. The back hem will be five inches. I think it's fantastic, again, with my daily uniform of um, dresses, but really I'm thinking my daily uniform of the button-down shirts, um, my favorite turtleneck underneath, and, um, and leggings, I know, I live in leggings. Um, and dresses, leggings and dresses, that's my sweet, my happy place. Um, that's going to be amazing for it. So that, that is one I'm working on now. That's obviously on pause until that, um, one skein arrives and hopefully fingers crossed, it's not too dramatically different, but I do think that that color, the Stardust has a lot of tonality to it. So hopefully it'll just all blend together, which again, fingers crossed. So like I was talking about before, I usually have just one sweater that I'm actively designing on the needles. I find that really takes a lot of my headspace. Um, at, you know, so when you're coming across decisions like how long for the body, how wide for the body, how big for the hem, how tall for the neck, like what's the sleeve gonna look like? Um, so I really only like to have one that I'm kind of living through. And sometimes when I go to design, I know exactly what I want and I can just work out the number, you know, from a gauge swatch, work out the numbers and off to the races. And then I can literally follow my own design and then just tweak the wording if it doesn't make sense. Um, but a lot of the time I'm totally playing it by ear. So this one I'm playing by ear. I knew I wanted a boxy sweater because the last sweater I knit, which is coming up, um, is very fitted. So I know that's what I tend to do, fitted, boxy, you know, um, back and forth. So I wanted a boxy oversized knit, oversized, I think, not even necessarily boxy, but oversized, because even this one, the sleeves I've decided are gonna be oversized as well too. So they're gonna be um, full sleeves, not full, huge, but full and straight um, with a big cuff. So I've done a, a big neck here, and then um, I've started to work on the um, hem, and this is again gonna be like another really big, deep hem, so three and a half, maybe four inches. Um, I've added lots of short rows. I am, um, I slouch, I'm, I've got a bit of a hump in the back of my neck, so I'm very conscious of short row shaping um, because I think it looks horrible when your sweater falls down your back. So there's always good back row shape, um, back of the neck shaping here. And I also like to have it um, on the back um, because I think that looks really flattering. I think, especially if you wear, I wear sweaters say over, you know, over this button down blouse, long tunic-y kind of thing, not tunic, it doesn't go to my knees, but you know, thigh length. I like the sweater to just fall and if it comes down slightly, not, I mean, I also like when it's exaggerated and I will design that too, but when it just sort of slightly comes a bit further down in the back than the front, I really like that look. I think it's really flattering. Why is it flattering? I think it cut because it, you don't have an absolute horizontal line at your widest point. So by having a curve at your, say that you put my shoulders here, if you've got a curve at your widest point rather than a line that just emphasizes the width, 
this is just gentle. So that's my theory behind that. It's all just thought and theory. And I'm really into um, pinks and reds. This really got, I mean, I was thinking about this color combination all summer. Um, so, and this one is a bit different from other pinks and reds that I've done before because this is like intense, vibrant, almost like the hottest hot pink. And then with the tomato red, which I think was really exciting. So uh, last year or two years ago, I really played around with oranges and I feel like I'm kind of moving out of my orange phase and into tomato red phase. And I think it's really fabulous with the pink. So what I've done here is I usually, so I've mentioned I have cones and again, I will show you that how that works. So I have cones, I use them as my workhorse. So they're like my base yarns. Um, and then that allows me to buy the, interesting textured yarns. So this is from Diamond Lane or Lamb and Kid called Birdie. And I did the um, Plaid is my favorite color, which is sort of the tomato and uh, Pop Rocks, which is a hot pink. And I have um, my workhorse yarns that I can pair along with it just to give it sort of some state some substance. So with the um, tomato, uh, Plaid is my favorite color, the tomato I've got that with um, whole super soft um, color uh, brandy. And then for the hot rocks, I've got um, a cone from a Woolly Knit British Four Ply in the um, uh, Fandango, Fandang Fandango pink. Um, and I just think they, they they don't interfere with the wonderful colors of the lamb and kid. They just basically are the support behind it. So yeah, so I'm working on that. Um, it's got a cool kind of, it was supposed to be just sort of baubles dropping. That was my intention with those shapes and stuff. But sometimes it even looks like, um, like a leopard print or whatever. So I'm even tempted to re-knit this maybe in the future using um, shades of brown. Uh, so that's kind of cool yeah so this is coming along the hem is still to do sort of three and a half three and a half to four inches of hem I'll decide on that and then full sleeves that just go straight and just sort of probably three quarter that'll end right here again with the um, tomato red cuff and I'm really looking forward to that and I'm just now taking a mental break by enjoying the ribbing and um, I think that's fun. Uh, I like mental breaks. <laughs> so, and it took me a long time to decide on what length I wanted in the body. That's why I'm kind of glad to have gotten to a point where I'm really happy and just taking that mental break to just work the ribbing because I really hummed and hawed like how long should it be with an oversized look. And I find there's sort of a, a fine line between um, too short, which is only for dresses and too long that just looks um, frumpy and circles my tummy. So it's finding that right length of just kind of cozy, teeny bit sloppy, so that it's cozy and casual and chill. Um, yeah, and still flattering. And I'm picturing myself wearing that with a really fun um, pleated skirt. That's what I really wanna wear, it's sort of half tucked in the front, a fun pleated skirt probably. I think I have a really nice red one with really interesting pleats. Um, I think that'd be a really fun and then flats and that'd be my Christmas day or Christmas Eve. We go to a party on Christmas Eve. So that could, that's assuming the weather cooperates and we're not having a warm, humid day like today, but that would be my plan. Um, I think that'd be really fun and chic and bold and festive and, um, and a lot of color, which is great. We should all, sometimes I like wearing black, but sometimes I like to wear a lot of color and I think that's going to be the day. Anyways, so that's kind of what I'm working on now. So that's going to keep me busy, those two things, along with those um, fun advent knits. I might, depending on how long I think that that other um, skein will take for the finishing off the turtle dove, I might start another sweater. And that'll be explained with this one here. So, um, because there's a lot of sweaters I still need to knit for this design, which, yeah. So that's kind of like a hanger there. So with this sweater... I love this. This is what I call 
my Burmy basic design. It's simple. It fits me with it like a glove. It's like my perfect basic sweater. Love it. So with this design, it's something I've been working on for already now, at least a year, maybe more. And what I found was I figured out how to mathematically grade. Does, I've got all the numbers for this sweater in any weight of yarn. There's sort of parameters. Let me, again, this is a 28 stitch. I'm not going to knit anything tighter. That's so that's we're bumping at the, the tightest right now. The loosest will probably be a 12 stitch um, per four inches. So between 12 stitch per four inches and 28 stitch per four inches. And I'll do it in two stitch increments. It's 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 to 28. I've knit quite a few. I've done all the math. It, once I set up my Excel spreadsheet, I can, the numbers just fall out. It's really easy. It's really cool. I love it. And I think it makes like the perfect sweater. And I think it really fits um, all the size ranges and everything. Cause I've, the numbers not only work for the gauge, but they also work for the grading. So it goes from quite small to 60 plus inch finish, you know? So we've got from the low 30s to the 60s. So it should sort of fit everyone. The other thing I like about it is you can play around with ease. Because it's sort of a neutral sweater, I think most of the ones that I've knit, I've knit at a 44 inch bust. Um, and right now that's my preferred. I'm really tempted to knit one at a bigger um, gauge. And I might do that with some of the larger gauge weights of yarn. Um, I didn't want to make anything too much bigger for 28 stitch gauge just because, you know, got to keep going. And also I only had so much of this yarn. So this yarn, this is fabulous. This is, I bought this when I was with Dinah, visiting Dinah and um, the girls in Knitting Posse and Pam this summer. And it was definitely on my list. I knew I wanted to get this yarn when I went to the knitting place. Um, and this is from Kokon and it's the um, organic fingering non-superwash yarn in ELO, which is um, Electric Light Orchestra, which my husband loves that band. Anyways, so I just think it's so much fun. And because it's 28, in 28 stitch gauge, it's really light. So, I mean, I love it now over this dress, or I could wear it over um, my button down shirt, but I can also see on like a cold day, especially if I'm traveling, take it along and it could even be an undering, like an under layer. It's really, really fantastic. And the color is really fun. I was playing with pooling a bit. So I really let it rock for the neck, for the, for the collar. And then after my short row shaping, I helically knit the whole body. So you can see it's really fascinating. Like this is more or less the same sort of, um, diameter knitting and then whoop, it gets a bit bigger. So, you know, so the, the spaces get bigger and then it comes back down to sort of similar to this. I don't, I found that fascinating. And I was sort of really looking at the yarn to try and figure out mathematically how I wanted to do it. The sleeves also, I didn't helically knit the sleeves because they kind of all worked together. You know, it's, I thought it was going to be more of this, but then magically it just kind of separated i guess there was an, enough sleeve decreases that it hit a different um, diameter here which really opened up the um the dyeing and i really think that's cool um so i love that helical helical knitting is fantastic for those that don't know it it's a great way to um make stripes um or also blend um hand dyed yarn so helical knitting who has the best, you know, Babbles Travels Knitting, um, can't remember her name, but she's on YouTube. She has what I think is the best um, YouTube um, video on helical knitting, but honestly, put it into YouTube. It's so straightforward. It's not a problem at all. Um, it won't break your brain. It's, you can do it very mindlessly. And I, I did do it very mindlessly. 
um, on this. I enjoyed this knit very much. Um, I set small goals, like knit so many inches a day. You don't have to. Again, I'm just trying to keep to a sort of a schedule. And the helical knitting didn't slow me down one iota. Um, it's a great, it's a great one. So with the same design, so the design is called the Burmy Basic. So this is Burmy Basic 28. Um, I've got a few more here. So I've got Burmy Basic 18, which is um, with yarn from Fashion School Dropout that I bought at Rhinebeck last year, the year before. So love this. This is really cozy. Can you see the boucle? Yeah. Um, and the idea for this is so we can go to the trade shows or go to a yarn store um, and have fun and fall in love with the yarn and not worry about finding a pattern because the Burmy basic, you will always have a pattern. And I think we all kind of have an idea, you know, if, if you're doing a fingering, like a fingering weight yarn, I know I need about 1200 yards. So I can safely sort of get three or four skeins. Um, we all sort of hopefully will, again, this is along the lines of magic numbers, like, you know, magic numbers for your fit and size and stuff, but also magic numbers on what you kind of need in your basic weights. So I can eyeball it and go to a store and be, and just sort of, you know, like when I, like I, I knew I wanted this yarn. I wasn't really sure what I was going to make with it, but I knew I needed about 1200 yards. So I bought that. And then the idea is then you can just plug and play. So um, when I bought this wonderful um, boucle at Rhinebeck, it was just the colors. I loved it and the texture, fantastic. So I bought probably around a thousand yards or something similar and, um, and just did a gauge swatch, figured out to the closest uh, even number of um, stitches for the four inch gauge and worked on it, worked through this pattern. So really easy. So again, gives you freedom to buy what you like and you know you always have a pattern for it. So that was the 18, Burmy Basic 18. The Burmy Basic 20, um, love it. I, this is this is like an everyday sweater for me. This is the La Vienna May uh, Cori Confetti and um, the color Nightfall. And again, amazing. Um, I just found the gauge that was close enough, you know, found the gauge and then worked my pattern, knit to my pattern that was close enough. So this is the 20. Um, my design does have tapered sleeves. That's my preference, but don't taper them if you don't want to. Literally just don't do the uh, decreases. I mean, that's, it's as simple as that. If you have, I'm short waisted. If you want a longer body, do a longer body. If you want a split hem, do a split hem. But basically this design is super simple. It's not confusing. It's just, it's supposed to be your basic, basic pattern so that you can have whatever you want and you can adjust it to exactly what your vision is. Um, but it gives you, does all the math for you. And um, I think the fit is amazing. So, um, and then the last one I've knit is the 22. And this, I had a Primrose, um, yeah, Premier's Yarn Company, um, and their Adelaide base color witching hour that I mixed with the La Bienna May mohair silk um, color, the Shire. And I love this one too. So this one, you can see a little pooling. It's funny, in reality, you don't really notice it as much. Cameras really pick up on color differentials. Um, but I just love this and the drape on this is fantastic. Um, so exact same sweater. And when I hold them up together, they're all like, they're all the same. Oh, sorry. Well, if you hold them up square, you know, anyways, so you have to hold them up square. I've laid them down. They're all the same. It's a wonderful, um, test also. Hey, Lynn. It's a wonderful test also on just for me, which is a really good skill to have is to um, understand gauge and really be able to get to an exact gauge and, and anything like that. So it's sort of, it's skill building for me to be knitting the samples up and writing the patterns. But the pattern's all there. Um, I would like to knit the other ones. Um, so I think the next two that I'd like to the 24 and the 26, maybe I'd, you know, alternate that with a larger gauge too. But 
I've got some yarn that I'm really excited for that um, I think will fall into the 22, 24, 26 um, stitch gauge stuff that I bought at um, Rhinebeck this year. So that's that's something that I might put on my needles depending if the uh, turtle dove, yeah, oh, siren. Um, if the turtle dove yarn takes a while to come here, um, shipping to Bermuda can be a while. So what I do is I send it to an air freight forwarder in the States and then I pay for it to come. Anyways, it can, it can come in two weeks, it can take three or four weeks. So I just, I'll figure it out as it comes. Um, Looney, you, you comfy? You good? Yeah, so that's that. So what I would like to start doing is I would like to start testing this um, design in the new year. I would like to probably pick just two gauges to start with so that basically the test ending, which is making sure that the structure of the pattern, the wording, which it would be consistent through all of them, is as clear and precise and um, everything is possible. So I'd like to just stick with maybe two gauges, refine that, and then I could throw it out for all the gauges and all the, you know, um, after that. But then that would be once we've set on the wording, if that makes sense. So hopefully this is sort of my project for the new year for test knitting. If you have a preference on what gauge and if you'd like to test knit, let me know. Um, you know, maybe, maybe doing the 18 and 24 and I'll work on the 24 too. Just throwing it out there. Um, yeah. So please weigh in if you have any, uh, thoughts or comments, but maybe having something that's kind of one smaller gauge and one larger gauge, but sort of in the middle. And then once I have my, um, it's a really edited pattern. I mean, I've knit it so many times that I've really edited the wording. I don't want it to be um, too verbose or anything. I just want it as simple, simple, simple as possible so that it's just the Burmy basic. That's the idea. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, yeah, I, like I said, this is something that's been in the works for at least a year and a half, if not two years or more. Um, I can't remember. So anyways right back with my last sweater. So two secs. Okay. The last one. And this is going to be a quick one because this is like a ski jumper and it's hard. So this is the Remline sweater. Um, I think this is an itty bitty sample when I last talked to you, it's now been knit and, um, it's being, it's been tech edited and it's being test knit as we speak. I'm hoping to have this out mid January. Um, I'm really starting to sweat. So this is a, um, a great one, but holy crow, this is a hot one. So um, this goes back to sort of like the color play pullover design where it is, it starts at the top, which is a turtleneck, rolled edge, increase along the shoulder seams for a saddle shoulder, and then down here, and I'm getting so warm I almost can't think. It's not brioche, it's not ribbing, it's just one by one color work which also explains something that I have to correct with it. A test center and I are having a conversation. I just realized that anyways. So, okay. Wow. That's, it's funny to say things out loud, isn't it? Anyway, so this is great. This is fitted. This is why the, the current work is oversized just because fitted oversized. Um, it's one by one color work, no ribbing all the way through. It's super easy. Um, I've just done cuffs that are, very, very, very minimally ribbed um, in a solid color just so they hold their shape. It's lovely. I love it. Rum line sweater. I'm actually, okay, have we seen it? Can I take it off? And then I can think and I can describe it more. So just bear with me. One sec. Holy cow. Okay. Oh my gosh. I hope I'm not like, yeah, my collar was all messed up. Okay. Woo. Um, so Remline sweater, Rem, Remline, what is Remline? Uh, it's R-H-U-M-B, Remline is, um, it's a nautical term. It's um, the line between two points. Usually people use it in sailing. So you hit the rem line, which is like your fastest um, way to the marker. When you're sailing upwind, um, you can't go directly into the wind. So you have to tack upwind and you wanna 
what you'd bang a corner. Basically, the fastest way to do it is to get to what's called banging a corner so that you can tack onto the rum line, which would allow you to sail as fast as you can to the marker. That's windward. So that's a rum line. So beam reach, broad reach, you've got two markers here. The rum line is basically that um, sideways into the wind. The wind is coming straight down. You tack and you hit a rum line and then you get to your marker. Um, Bermuda is very nautically. Um, my family doesn't, um, I sailed a lot. I used to sail competitively in North America. Um, my son hates sailboats. He doesn't like boats. It's pretty funny, but um, nautical terms are a part of life here. Um, boats are big here. It's a really small island. So when people have, we don't have cottages, so people have boats. My family doesn't. We're not. Um, I love sailing, but I'm, I'm over it. And as I get older also, I, I can't deal with the sun. I really can't deal with the sun. And I'm glad for it because um, I have enough visits with the dermatologist already with uh, pre previous skin damage. And um, anyways, <laughs> whatever. But that's a rem line, long and short. So I just thought this was really fun. It's a rem line as in, I found also sort of the easiest, most direct line to get from your collar to your sleeves and your hem um, with a very linear design. Uh, it's very architectural. I love that you can see there, actually, maybe I didn't even need to wear it at all, um, but you can see the lovely increases. So you've got a saddle shoulder here and you can see the increases are branching everything out from that saddle shoulder. When you get to your shoulder tip, like your th this one you want to have at the tip of your shoulder, because there's, unlike the color play, you want it to be set back a bit because you've got a bit of a poof. This one has to be at the tip of your shoulder and it just goes straight down. Um, so then your increases are for your sleeves here. You've got a really small straight section just to make up the difference in your arm size. And then you've got the increases here to make up for the bust. So it's the differential between your shoulder and your finished bust. This one I would probably do with um, zero to maybe minus two to plus two ease. Not, not a lot of ease. I don't think this would look good. Oversized because of course, um, it's really all about your measurements and the most important, really, really, well, the bust is very important. The Another important measurement is your shoulder. So when this comes out and if you're keen on knitting it, look at your bust measurements and use that for your yardage and your, you know, all that sort of stuff. But just make sure that your shoulder measurement here, so see where my finger's going in, which is like the base of my neck, the collarbone, just measure that distance there. So for me, this is, I think this is about three and a half, four inches. I'm, I'm doing this all by memory. So at the time I, it's all in the pattern, but for me, this is about three and a half to four inches, I believe. So that's when I wanted my, I believe my um, saddle shoulder is approximately four inches long to fit my shoulder. So you wanna make sure that you've got the right distance there. And then you can make up the difference between this and your chest. and. Um, very easily. All that stuff's in there in the pattern. And this is one of those sweaters that is really designed so that you can get your absolute best custom fit. Uh, this is for your, you know, they're all for your bespoke fit. They're all meant for you to um, tweak and, and optimize. But this one and all of these sort of faux saddle shoulder designs that I have, and I've got quite a few of them, including the color play, which we talked about earlier, you know, this is where you can really look. Um, so, you know, this, you can see where the saddle shoulder starts on top of that V. So that's four inches there. So that gives me that, and that gets the sweater to the edge. The increases here get me to under the bust. The yarn, oh, I'm not talking about the yarn. So the yarn that I use in this is, um, I purposely picked this up when I was at Rhinebeck. I knew I had this in my mind. Um, so this is Harrisville Daylights and Nightshades. Um, it's a really great yarn. I Testers are working in all sorts of amazing yarns. Some, um, quite a few that are in the uh, Superwash DKs. 
and that's fantastic. Um, it's a bit drapier, which is wonderful. And actually, I'd, I'd really like to knit one that's um, in something like that. And I'll have to see what my stash. I know that's my weak point in my stash is DK weight stuff. Um, but I would love to knit that um, because it's it's really, it's drapier. And, and so when you're going for the ease, it's really, um, really form-fitting, even more than this. This is wonderful, but of course, it's got the structure of more of a toothy yarn, which is great. And again when I put it over my, um, my uh, tunic -y, denim tunic tunics, I love that it's sort of, it's sort of fitted and then the tunic kind of flows at the bottom. Um, this design, definitely I have um, a vest version in mind to come next, but again, this is in the test knitting um, phase right now and I would just like that to be finished so that um, I can be sure that my wording is clear and stuff like that so there's no confusion there. Um, and then I'll just take that pattern and change it because um, for a vest, I, instead of a shoulder, a sweater where you have a sleeve coming off, I prefer a vest coming in. So you'd have your point here at the base of your neck and then you'd want your vest to come sort of, there's like a knobbly bit in here. You'd want your vest to be narrower here so that your shirt comes out the side or, or arm. I mean, if you were to wear it which <laughs> if it was a day like today, I'd wear it like that where it's, there's no, nothing underneath it. But you want the a vest to be narrow over here, follow your arm side and then make up the difference. So you won't have all the increases at the top for the sleeve and it'll be shallower. So you'll have greater increases for bust. That's on the plans. I'll work on that probably after Christmas or so. Um, but my focus right now is just finishing up um, the one sort of Christmas bobble design. I don't think it's going to be called a Christmas sweater because I don't think it really is Christmassy, but it's just what I had in my mind in the beginning. So I want to focus on that pattern, finish that up, maybe get another of the Burmy basics going and so that we can get rocking and rolling on test knitting that in the new year. And like I said, let me know if you're interested. And um, that's that was exciting. So that is pretty much it um, of the knitting. It's a lot, I think. And that's really why I think I want to do every two weeks. I'm worried that every two weeks is going to bog me down um, and take up too much time. I love chatting with you. I think it's fantastic. But at the same time, I like producing as well. It's that, having that fine balance. So we'll see. January definitely will be two in that month. We might do February two, and then I might have to do a um, just a, you know step back and see if that's just one too many or whatever. Um, life stuff. Um, so it's my birthday on Wednesday, turning 48, um, birthday, uh, birthday for me always was just like, I couldn't decorate the Christmas tree until after, or decorate the house when I was growing up, uh, until after my birthday. So my birthday, I always sort of wished from past. <laughs> it was like, oh, it's exciting. It's my birthday. Yay. Okay. Christmas. Okay. You know, let's go. So I'm over that now. Um, what's going on, Looney? That she's sitting in her chair right there and watching the street. So. She keeps on the street. So yeah, so birthday week, that's kind of exciting. Looking forward to that. Um, also on my list is the podcast and knitting full time. So we talked about that. That's, you know, uh, we'll see how that goes. I'm really enjoying it. I hope you are too. It seems like you are. Uh, love all your messages. It's really fun. I love um, the chats and stuff like that. So um, yeah, keep coming. And um, how great is that? Um, looking forward to Christmas. Um, yeah, plans for January, which we talked about. So I've kind of covered everything on my little list. Um, other than a big thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, there's been a lot of um, people watching the last few podcasts, which is amazing. And um, yeah, I just, I love it. I love talking to you. I love explaining my um, processes. And um, it's helpful for me to explain my processes, my thoughts with the knitting design. Um, it all happens in my head and it becomes very circular and just, just sort of say it out loud and talk about it, it clears things up. And I just caught something now that I can go back to a test editor and, and answer even more. So thank you so much for letting me ramble on for all these minutes because that um, answered my own question. Yay. So that's that's that. Um, one thing I would love to, I just, I put on my earrings this morning and I, you know, they're little Bermuda roofs. Can you see them? They're so cute. Aha, uh -huh, that's good with my 
shirt behind it. Anyways, this is, um, I wanted to sort of let everyone know, I, I think it's fun when I travel or whatever to pick up or travel voyeuristically on my computer, uh, to pick up special things from special countries. Um, the, this jewelry I collect, it's a friend of mine named Rebecca Little. Um, I'll put her name along with all the other sort of um, designs and yarns down below. But Rebecca Little, she does a lot of really amazing um, all by hand jewelry. She makes it here in Bermuda. Um, it's, I think, quite affordable. Um, I usually try to treat myself to something from her every year. Um, this I treated myself a couple years ago and they're kind of my all time favorite. Yeah, you can see the Bermuda roof. So it's a triangle. So Bermuda triangle, the Bermuda roof. Um, she's very modern, geometric, very cool, very um, she, she's a really nice girl. Um, and so I thought I would do a little shout out for her. Check her out, Rebecca Little Jewelry. She does a lot in silver, if that's your preference. Um, I have both silver, gold, not in these, but I've, I've collected different things in either from her over the years. Um, and she's just a special local artist that I thought you all might enjoy. So treat yourself to, maybe I'll treat myself to a birthday gift be fun or maybe a Christmas gift but anyways it's a time of giving or receiving or whatever and she's very special and very talented and I just thought I would give her a little shout out so Rebecca Rebecca little her information will be down here too so I think that's everything I had to say if you celebrate Christmas Merry Christmas if you are if you don't enjoy this time of year um if it's hot or cold or wherever you are, that's fantastic. Happy New Year. And I will see you in 2024. Okay, take care. Bye.